That's beautiful. So unique. Got to play. So every time we come down, he brings his, his chicken. We got to play chicken before we work. You got to play chicken? I gotta go to work, man. Hey, I gotta go to work. Well, that's more interesting now to me. Do I gotta want it? I won't get it. Look over there. Is that a squirrel over there? You see that squirrel? Oh, he didn't fall for that one no more. Still looking for that squirrel, ain't you? All right, we gotta go to work. <laughs> Whew, rain a lot. All right, we got Frontier of the Fog back. He's been out here every day. He went under the sawmill. We have to shoo him away from the sawmill. Oh boy, go, go. Don't right this side, go that way. No, <laughs> no. You don't want to mess with that. He trusts me more than he does get him. Look at that big old thing coming at me. So Tanya won't let me just pick his frog up and... Oh, come here, boy. Come here. Put him in the woods. I'm going to keep him from peeing on me. Pick him up by his head. No frogs were hurt in the production of this lumber. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to come out and I'm gonna say this is still, we're still in the practicing phase of this sawmill. We have uh, the OS 23 that we've got a lot of board hours or board feet through, but we're still learning the little quirks on this one. We are going ahead and uh, we're gonna get one more extension so we can do like 10 foot boards we're going to be able to need that right now i can only cut a 96 inch board and even cutting 96 inches is really tight you have to really like be be precise so we get the extra extension i think that's going to make it a lot better but we're still going to practice on this i've got some i've got some uh, 96 inch logs that i need to cut up into boards let's get to it So if you're on a chainsaw, you're gonna break a pull cord sometime. It's just gonna happen. That's why it's important to have at least 12 chainsaws. So just tell your wife that's why you have 12 chainsaws. I don't even remember where we got this log from. The way that center core is like perfectly circular, sick, it's like a perfect circle. It makes me think this was in a fire at one point. There's a, like a black ring around the center, which might probably made it sick. I'm gonna go ahead and take my log all the my head all the way up out of the way. got spoiled using my grapple. That 
wasn't horrible. Scratched it. We have a red cherry log, or excuse me, a black cherry log on the sawmill. It's about 95 inches long. It's got some uh, dead side to it. And what I'm gonna do is try to uh, salvage as much out of this as I can. And if we've, we're learning on the sawmill, so if we mess up, it's not that big a deal. We're gonna take you along as we uh, learn how to use this sawmill, we, even though we have the OS 23. And we've got, you know, probably we've got thousands of board feet through that. This is still a little bit different and it's got its own little quirks and we're having to learn how each one of these works. So I've already, we've already cleaned this up. We blew it out earlier. So I feel pretty good about it. This is the same blade that we tested earlier. The first thing you're gonna do is tighten up the blade tension. And basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna turn this knob until you start feeling a little pressure. So about right there, I feel a little pressure. And we're gonna turn it five full turns. So there's half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, five. Now we've already done all of the pre-test and we've already assembled this thing. If you've not seen that video, I'll leave a link at the end of this video uh, to show how to set this up. Now it's time to saw. We're gassed up, the oil's checked, it's grease. It has one grease fitting on it on the blade guide. It's in good shape. Get this out of the way. This blade has got just one log cut on it, so it's just filling the blade. It, yeah, it's still razor sharp, so I don't foresee any problems. And this is uh, black, black cherry, which is not super hard. Let's let our engine warm up. We'll go ahead and throw the choke on. Crank this thing up and then let it idle for a while, warm up. We're gonna go ahead and hit the safety switch, do a test on that. This is not something I do every time, but I want you guys to hear what I'm doing next. So this is your valve to turn on the water. And what I'm gonna do is just set the water. This, is, this just turns it on. And it, this uh, auto lube keeps it off until you pull the trigger. What you wanna do is get it set, reach down, look at your where it comes out, hold the trigger, and see how much water comes out, how fast. So that's how much it's coming out right now. It's a little fast, so I'm gonna take the knob up here, turn it back a little bit more to the closed position, and then we'll try it again. A little bit more to the closed position. Oh yeah, now we're in that sweet spot. Otherwise, you're gonna run out of water really fast. To start this thing back up, hit the twist it, and it pops back out. Again, it's, it's, it's warm now, but it, this, this engine likes the choke. Now we're ready to make the first cut. I believe I'm gonna reset my back stop on the far end of the log. It's a little high for me. It's hard to gauge it from back there. All right, that's my best guess. Hit the lock here at the, on the foot. Release that lock. Get close to the log.
and then we'll go to make our next cut. I think what I'm gonna do is rotate this over 180 degrees, cut on the flat spot, and then rotate it back around to where this top is. Well, I guess I can just do 90 degrees and go from there. Yeah, so I'll just turn it up on its side, cut the top of this rotted part off, and hope for the best. I'm hoping that that rotted portion is gonna give us some, some neat looks. These little lighter logs are much more fun to work with, I'll say that. So I just sat here and was holding this with one hand and was trying to tighten my log dogs down. And I completely forgot about this new sawmill has this little clamp thing that you run up under the log to keep it from rolling backwards. That's, you know, normally you throw a wedge up under it. Again, just learning the quirks. I made that a lot harder than it needed to be. So we're gonna cut the, the rod off of this and then go from there. I give myself plenty of room, I think we're fine. about six and three quarters of an inch and that's going to give me a probably the best board yield that I can get we'll give it a shot and then we'll rotate it over and start cutting four quarter boards yeah I misjudged that a little bit should have took a deeper cut well, we committed, so we're going to go all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to six inches and just make six inch boards out of it. All right, here we go.
this is one of my most favorite features. It's where you can take this and set it on the bottom of a square cut can and then tighten it down. That's the first one set. This allows you to, if you put it on this mark right here, this allows you to cut one inch boards. Right now my board, uh, my cutter is set on exactly four quarters. So if I go down, each time I go down four quarters, I should get a one inch board. It takes into account the loss of the blade cut. That was just sacrifice. I'll come back, hit four quarters, and go again. I grabbed it on the wrong one. It's gotta be on that little hook right here. There we go. I think we're gonna have to hide the chicken. This is four quarters down from the last cut, and we'll continue to go all the way down like that. if you want to use that or not not really much of it we're ready to make our first cut uh it's gonna it's gonna produce a board of some length Yeah, buddy, you got duck, chicken, whatever it is, in a way. So I have went over this thing with a fine tooth comb and when I installed it, but I did find one boat that I missed. These two outer ones are tight and that's why it's not moving around, but it's just one of them things where keep an eye out for loose boats right after you put it together because you know what, we're, we're flawed and we can not catch it. And I missed that one right there. I missed another one earlier, but I didn't get it video. 
just that was my fault no no fault of the the company just a, an assembly issue let me start it back up hopefully it'll crank right up all right this is our last one inch cut and this is why i really like those log dogs that have that little catch on the bottom because you can come right back down and catch that last one nice one inch cut Check it out and see what we got. Well, it's going to be, it's not structural grade stuff for, by any means. There's a lot of rod in it, but for like something ornamental it's gonna be awesome excited to see what these look like dry Gotta get me a workstation down here, like a little building or something where I can, a little box, so I can put my tools down here, leave some stuff down here. What do you guys call these over here? You f call them fletches or scabs? What do you call them? Huh? Scraps. Huh? Scraps. Scraps, she says. Okay, that's, that's a valid one. All right, let's see some water. Please. Future project. Future project, no, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a black cherry honey roasted chickens right there, what that is. Somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. Kevin Bowie, he watches some of our videos and he is, uh, he loves, uh, uh, takes uh, black cherry and then smoke his chicken. Ready? Wow. I said it's not structurally sound, but for something like inside the cabin after this dries as a wall, like a ship lap wall. Maybe too rich for you. That's not too bad. Well, it'll, it'll lighten up quite a bit and then you put a clear coat over it. That's beautiful. So unique. So most professional sawyers probably wouldn't saw this log because it is not 100% structurally sound. But in our case, where we know it's gonna be like an accent wall in our cabin, it doesn't need to be structurally sound, it just needs to be beautiful. And this is what you find. <laughs>